All right, everybody, Stocks by the Numbers, welcome back. We have a few minutes to go into the close here, and I wanted to take a look at this company here that is posting earnings actually tomorrow after the close, but I think, in my opinion, they're worth your time, energy, and attention. Name of the stock we're looking at is Elf Beauty Incorporated, ticker symbol ELF, listed here on the New York Stock Exchange. Stock right now, $169.77, just went green on the day, up one cent here going into the close. You can see here the company hit a new 52-week high, $174.32. So in my opinion, I actually think volume is coming into the stock recently, and I think everyone is probably, in my opinion, anticipating yet another earnings beat here. If we come down, we look at some of these earnings reports here first of all just look at this stock and where it's come from and how much it has grown here we're going back june of 22 here so what that's roughly 18 months stock went from 25 dollars hit 174 dollars today right cosmetic beauty we know is a growing market and of course more importantly almost seen as a necessity right so let's get into the numbers here we have a market cap 9.37 billion pe about 79 and a half okay the beta 1.39 again the beta the volatility of the stock in relation to the overall volatility of the market so technically a little bit more volatile than the overall market however uh, even though we could potentially make the argument that it could be viewed as overvalued in the numbers, you guys remember what I told you about consistent growth quarter over quarter, year over year, and of course, consistent positive catalysts coming in for a stock. So this company has not only been consistently beating earnings here and doing so handsomely here. I mean, look at some of these quarters here coming in almost 100% doubling on the profitability side here two quarters ago and you can see a revenue beat there north of 17 percent and even the quarter before that more than a double on the beat there on the eps side and coming in almost 20 percent above analyst expectations on the revenue side so this company's really just kicking ass and taking names right here. And if we look here at the quarterly revenue, I mean, just look at what's happened just over the course of the last four or five quarters here. The company going from about $120 million and change, now we're up to almost $220 million for a quarter here. So revenue has essentially almost doubled, and basically we're estimating a double here. We can see here for tomorrow after the close, the company EPS estimates of roughly $0.57 cents a share. But look at the revenue side, right? This is what I told you, to watch these companies, and in my opinion, follow the money. Money, follow the revenue and we can see that q2 of 22 the company brought in 122 and a third million we'll call it and now you can see revenue estimates for tomorrow we're now up to over 238 million for the quarter already so this company is really doing something right and of course as the revenue is increasing we're also seeing the profitability margins increasing as well and uh, obviously that makes sense however we don't always see that but more importantly, look at the look at the growth that we're seeing in this company since uh, 2020, bringing in 318 million for the year, jumping up to almost 400 million. 2022, 578.84 million, and now look at this. Right, we have a couple of quarters here for uh 2023 and you can see already just right off the bat here just in these first two quarters the company brought in you know uh over 430 million just for q1 and q2 of 2023 so meaning that if they bring in this 238 they're now up to uh what like 650 660 million so far and Obviously, they already eclipsed what they brought in for 2022, and they're potentially going to hit the seven to eight hundred million mark, in my opinion, to close out 2023. So the revenue growth in this company cannot be denied. And if we look at 2023 and we estimate that potentially seven, eight hundred million, we could say that now the company is trading, you know, 10, 12 times yearly revenue to market cap comparison, and the PE could be viewed as high. However, if they consistently beat and consistently keep growing, then in my opinion, they should consistently keep climbing up in value, right? This is essentially almost like an NVIDIA argument that we can make here. But basically, long story short, this is why I say that in my opinion, it's just so much easier to follow the money and just follow the revenue. If we come down here, we can see, look at this annually here, the company coming in above analyst expectations for yearly revenue for the last four years in a row. And you can see, look at these 2023 estimates, right? Actually, for, for 2023 estimates up here, 927 million. So if we come, in my opinion, even close to that number, yes, again, we could be trading 10 times right now current value. We are trading roughly 10 times that number here, revenue to market cap comparison. However, 
the the rate at which they're growing that revenue cannot be denied and in my opinion they should be rewarded we can see also on the eps side the company four out of four for the last four, uh, four years in a row and we can see for 2023 profitability estimates jump up even more estimates for the year of two dollars and 78 cents a share if we switch over here quarterly same thing we looked at some of these earnings before and you can see that even here as of last quarter yes the percentage of the beat did go down however still nine and a third percent coming in above analyst expectations right meaning that if these earnings coming out tomorrow we have higher estimates up here on the revenue side of roughly 239 239 million we'll call it so if this company comes in you know another nine or ten percent above that number again and they post 255 260 million i'm telling you right now even though it may seem high in the numbers here in my opinion they're more than likely going to take the stock even higher if the company does post those numbers and of course more importantly look at the debt the debt i wanted to bring to your attention as well hovering at about 150 million for 2018 19 and 2020 and even though we've seen i'd say about 80 to 90 percent of other companies have their debt increase from 2020 we actually see elf beauty paying off the debt and having the debt drop down look at this 151 million down to 117 million for 2022 82 million so the debt has actually been cut in half since the lockdowns while at the same time the revenue has been growing like a weed along with the profitability and now essentially every metric we look at here including free cash flow and cash on hand is just climbing significantly here year over year and if we switch to the quarterly side as well we can see look debt sitting here 84 <clears throat> excuse me 82 million sub 80 million slightly back up to 81.6 million but more importantly look at the cash and cash equivalents right there just going back the last couple of quarters here this dark blue bar right here you can see 85 and a third million up to 87 million 120 million 142 million as of last quarter 167 million so if heaven forbid this company actually hits a speed bump or runs into a slight obstacle they now have a couple of hundred million dollars on hand to uh you know keep the ship afloat and get everything back on track so in my opinion i i'm really seeing nothing but green flags and the only red that i'm really seeing is the fact that they're trading roughly 10x yearly revenue which again in my opinion if they're consistently growing consistently beating eps and revenue estimates consistently getting upgraded consistently getting price target increases then again you know you, you have to give credit where credit's due and those stocks that do do that in my opinion should be rewarded but also here looking at assets and liabilities i mean this isn't even a question the company holding roughly 600 million in assets and total liabilities we're talking about roughly 176 million right so that's like a four to one ratio so in my opinion i'm really seeing a lot of positives here with elf beauty and just look at this growth here quarterly here just with the assets here i, I actually but here, looking at the assets, we can see over a course of about the last 18 months, total assets went from sub half a billion. Now it's approaching three quarters of a billion, right? Which means that total assets have increased in value by roughly 50% from where they were about 18 months ago. And of course, we can see that the liabilities have not increased at the same proportional percentage rate, meaning that the growth in assets is outweighing the slight increase that we've seen in liabilities. And what does that mean? Well, that means that assets minus liabilities yields total equity. And we can see that the total equity is essentially consistently climbing quarter over quarter, year over year. As of last quarter, total equity now eclipsing half a billion right and again we have debt now sub 100 million so in my opinion the company looks absolutely phenomenal in the numbers here in the fundamentals the book value per share we can see up significantly we're approaching almost a double here from where we were 18 months ago if trends continue we can see book value sub six dollars climbs above six but only for two quarters then jumps into the sevens into the eights and then of course as of last quarter nine dollars and 45 cents now right so technically the company is trading at an extremely high multiple of book value per share to current market price so i can appreciate the fact that the price to book ratio is also kind of flying high as well however 
again, the more po the more consistent positives that come out with a stock, the more they're going to be rewarded, the more that Wall Street is going to take them higher. So, of course, nothing is set in stone. Earnings are 50-50. Please understand the risk going involved. Please understand the risks going in. If you're going to do this earnings play tomorrow after the close, However, again, in my opinion, this is why the volume is coming in. This is why the consistent buys, the consistent upgrades are coming in for something like Elf Beauty. Again, hitting a new high today, 174.32. But again, we have consistent revenue growth here. And look at this, going back the same 18-month period, right? The company brought in a little over $105 million for Q4 of 21. Now we fast forward here to mid-tail end of 23. The company now posting healthily above 200 million so revenue has doubled per quarter over the course of the last 12 to 18 months here so that's what i mean definitely nothing to sneeze at cost of goods looks like it's up roughly 50 percent from where it was however revenue minus cost of goods sold yields gross profit and you can see that the gross profit significantly consistently climbing quarter over quarter year over year 60 70 plus million up into the 90s now we've been uh maintaining above that 100 million mark and you can see that we go from about one and a quarter now we're up to almost 150 million on the gross profit side I'm telling you, the, the growth in these numbers that we're seeing is absolutely nothing to sneeze at. And even though we could, again, make the argument that technically we could be viewed as overvalued here with some of these valuations, at the end of the day, all I'm seeing is green. And usually when you only see green, you kind of end up seeing more green. Also, the operating income. Look, we had a slight dip here quarter over quarter going from over $60 million down to $40 million. However, we can see that the operating expenses have been bouncing around. We got them to sub 100 million, then we jump back up to 105 million. So, you know, that's uh, basically your 20 million dollar difference, which go which brought it from 60 to 40 million. However, overall, looking back to where the company came from here, 2 million, 20 million, 15 million in operating income. Now we're talking 40, 50, 60 million per quarter moving forward, right? So, looking back from where this company has come from again. They have done everything, in my opinion, that they possibly could on their end to really kick this, this company into gear, and it's being rewarded in, uh, in stock price. And sometimes it's just that simple. Switching over here now, looking quarterly again, see something like the PE could be viewed as high, right? We hit a high back here of a touch over 74, but right now currently we're sitting at a PE of 79 and a half. However, again, everyone is flying high and <clears throat> excuse me and piling into the stock now on anticipation that they're probably more than likely going to beat EPS and revenue estimates again and probably potentially up their future guidance moving forward so i have a feeling that people are really anticipating just further positive news and catalysts coming out of elf beauty uh tomorrow here after the close price to sales now trading at roughly 12 and three quarters right so of course going back previously we were in the single digits however it was down here at three and a half four times sales and then we immediately jump up to eight nine eight and now 12 times sales so that's what i mean a few of these metrics could be viewed as overvalued however consistent steady stable growth does get rewarded here on wall street that's what i'm trying to show you guys that's my main point here price to cash flow again was up here at 70 plus pulled all the way back down here to the low mid 30s and then has been consistent climbing now we're sitting here at 89 times cash flow so again a lot of these numbers could be viewed as overvalued potentially up here in the moon and we could potentially bring the stock back down to earth however if the numbers aren't amiss and no negative news comes out then the reasoning and the catalyst to bring it back down to earth is simply not there so it might not happen so if estimates now are 238 million or whatever the number was for the quarter, if the company comes in and posts like 205 million, then we can say, all right, they finally missed earnings. They have a negative catalyst. Let's chunk this son of a bitch down 10, 12%, right? But if that doesn't happen, then it's simply not going to happen. Look at the enterprise value, actually. 
Just over the course of the last 18 months, the company enterprise value, again, is the value at which another company would be willing to pay the stock to buy them out. And you can see here the enterprise value roughly 18 months ago, sub one and a half billion. The current enterprise value is north of nine and a quarter billion. The growth that this company has seen is nothing short of astronomical. And that's why, in my opinion, of course, it is much easier to react than it is to predict. So it's hard to predict if the company is going to beat earnings tomorrow after the close. However, if they do beat earnings, then we can react positively, as in my opinion, Wall Street will most likely continue to reward the stock. But look at the return on assets here, of course, up you know, uh, 300%, almost 400% from where we were 18 months ago. The return on equity, same thing, has essentially tripled. The return on invested capital has quadrupled. Uh, the gross margin percentages, we looked at these numbers before. Again, we were down here at the high 50 percentages. We jump into the 60s and have been maintaining that gross margin percentage level for the last six, seven quarters in a row. As of last quarter, 67.6% on the gross margin percentage. Definitely nothing to sneeze at. Operating margin percentage was all the way back here at 2% climbs into the mid-teens, drops back down into four, and then catapults back up to 28%, even as of last quarter, 18.64%, minus this big bump the quarter before. This current number is higher than they were the previous five quarters before that. So that's what I mean. You have to give credit where credit is due. EBITDA, once again, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization, the EBITDA margin percentage going from 8.5% up to the high teens, even breaking above 20 having that pullback all in the same quarter here down to about seven and a third percent and then absolutely exploding up to 30.6 percent even last quarter still sitting here at 21 and three quarters percent so of course not the highest it's been however seeing where we came from from the high single digits to mid to high teens now we're basically consistently staying above this 20 to 30 percent mark a lot of positives here in my opinion and of course, the net margin percentage, the overall profit margin percentage we looked at before, and we can see that 1.5% 18 months ago. Now the company is sitting here at around 15.5% net margin percentage. Of course, last quarter looked like it was their breakout quarter. A lot of these numbers really started to fly high. And you can see that last quarter net margin percentage roughly 24.5%. So going back now, we're looking at what? Q3. And we can see this was Q3 right here, this this row here. And you can see that the net margin percentage back Q3 of last year was only 13%. So all this company has to do, again, we can see the EBITDA, 19 and a half, we're sitting above 20. Operating margin sub 16, right? We're at high teens now, low 20s. Even the gross margin percentage is up roughly, you know, four points in change from where it was. The return on invested capital more than doubled from that point. The return on equity doubled from that point. The return on assets more than doubled from that point. So if the company just maintains this level of business and puts out very similar metrics to what they've been posting for the last two or three quarters here, in my opinion, this stock is going to fly high. We may see a potential $200 stock here in the next month or two coming off of this positive uh, news earnings, this, this positive earnings beat here taking place again tomorrow, Tuesday, after market close. But the inventory turnover is bouncing around again. We This is one of the things we could potentially say is a red flag. As you see, 2.3 up to 2.7, back down to 2.25, 2.5, back up to 2.7 as of last quarter, back down to about 2.25, right? So now, in my opinion, we need this quarter to come out roughly around that 2.5 or higher mark. However, of course, we uh, will cross that bridge when we get to it. The asset turnover cannot be denied. Phenomenal growth here, as you see. Roughly uh, 0.8, slowly, steadily climbing up to the high eights, getting to that 0.9 mark, and then breaking above one here in the last four quarters. 106, 115, now currently sitting at 119, right? And 119 in comparison to 80, again, oh, just over the last 18 months. These numbers have risen phenomenally. And we can see the asset turnover rising roughly 50% from where it was 18 months ago, now currently sitting from 80 to 119. Absolutely 
phenomenal. The company does not pay any dividends. And moving forward, we can see that not only is revenue up, but it is also forecasted and expected to keep growing here. Estimates coming in tomorrow after the close again. Revenue estimates, $238.89 million, and we can see moving forward, they're expecting $257 plus million for the next quarter, above $281 million for the quarter after that, and then kind of maintaining that level, posting a slight pullback, $276.84 million. And even looking at these numbers now, these numbers two, three quarters from now are roughly $40 million in change, higher than where the, the company is currently posting their revenue numbers. So th that's what I'm saying. The growth, not only in profitability, but more importantly, in my opinion, the main key metric, the growth in revenue has been absolutely phenomenal. And we can see here that the company was actually struggling more back in 2017, 2018. And now just in the last four or five years alone has absolutely just started running. And we can see revenue, a couple of hundred million here, 200 million in change for how many years here? Now revenue chunking up almost 600 million, 900 million, and now after 24, moving forward, we're now expecting a billion plus in annual revenue with consistent growth moving forward. So the EPS side seems to have not really been a problem for the stock, as we see going all the way back to 2016. The company's been coming in above analyst expectations for yearly profitability every single year going back to 2016. And of course, recently, obviously, in the quarters, they've been doing very well. So uh, I think, in my opinion, it is mainly the growth in revenue that everyone is pumped about. And of course, you know, the operating margins and, and then the gross profit rising and uh, the total equity, of course, assets minus liabilities, yield equity again so the equity consistently rising the book value per share consistently rising this is what wall street likes to see and as long as these numbers consistently keep climbing and they come in above these estimates whether they're higher or lower in my opinion the stock is more than likely going to continue to get rewarded and this is why i'm saying i think that actually given a few months pending what's reported tomorrow after the close I think 200 plus is actually conservative, believe it or not. Longer term, obviously, we'll have to keep an eye on earnings and see if the company could consistently keep up these positive catalysts. However, uh, again, as of right now, in my opinion, 200 plus in the next couple of months pending this earnings report, I, I think that's a layup. I really do. Uh, you, we can also see the growth in revenue, not only domestically here in the States, but also internationally as well. We can see over the years here going from sub 20 million and just consistently seeing growth here again, 2017, 18, 19, we can see this is where the company was struggling and was, and was growing very, very slowly. And now we can see that after these 2020 levels, the company has actually kick-started it itself up and brought itself that next leg higher and kicked it into the next gear and we can see that just below 34 million internationally in 2020 up to almost 45 million in 21 over 72 million in 22. so that's why i feel like not only is the business growing very rapidly but also i feel like the word is out and this is a stock that i think a lot of traders and investors alike are keeping an eye on and looking to play here in both the short and the long term right we have an average price target here north of 173 let's look at the forecast real quick then we'll look at stock charts and i'll let you guys go we can see that 15 analysts are currently looking at elf beauty and we have 10 giving it a strong buy and five giving it a hold so the consensus estimate on wall street is to either buy or hold this stock that, in my opinion, again, I don't really tout analysts too much. However, this is one of the few times in my eyes that they actually got it right. Um, I'm very surprised to see this price target down here at 141. However, in my opinion, if the company comes out and beats earnings tomorrow after the close, this price target will probably get increased to 170 plus or uh, probably near current market price after a potential earnings beat. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Let's switch over here to stock charts very quickly. I'll let you go. 
One technical, again, that raises a potential red flag is the RSI right now, currently sitting at 71. Again, benchmark of a potential quote-unquote overbought stock is above 70, and an oversold stock supposedly is below 30. But as we see here, during this run-up, the stock was maintaining a value of 70 plus on the RSI for a couple of weeks in a row here, and even maintained it for several days in a row here as well, even bouncing off of that next low and taking that next leg higher. So we could potentially have just like a flat or a slightly red day for ELF tomorrow, actually going into earnings to kind of bring the RSI down to that 70 sub 70 level. But again, either way, in my opinion, I still say I think it's a buy. And we also have the MACD cross to the upside there on the daily, even though the stock actually closed out flat today. I, I think that uh, I think that we're going to see potentially even more volume tomorrow throughout the day going into the earnings here for ELF. And again, on the weekly, we can see, look at how long the stock has maintained that 70 plus benchmark here. We're talking, you know what, almost 12 straight months, essentially, for the most part. And now the RSI on the weekly back up to north of 74 and a half. However, again, you know, if it wasn't an issue back here, it's probably not going to be an issue up here. So I wouldn't necessarily view something like the RSI indicator as one of the main leading indicators for something like Elf Beauty, because I just think that the numbers are telling the story. It's not necessarily about the technical indicators, in my opinion. But um, the top Bollinger Band here on the weekly we can see is about 178.70 and that's why off of the news you know to see a, a 7, 8, 10% pop real quick and bring the stock up to like the high 70s, low 180s after that news, I, I think it's very feasible in my opinion. If they happen to come in light then in my eyes, I think we pull it back down here to around this level, you're looking at probably around like 150 in my opinion, but again cross that bridge when we get to it Let's check the pivot points actually very quickly and then I'll let you go. We can see that the next resistance level up here at 182.55. This is why I'm saying if the company comes out with a beat, chances are they'll probably take it to that high 170, low 180 level. And if it doesn't happen immediately, then the word will get out that ELF beat earnings yet again. And it's such a stable, steady grower. And you should probably own a piece of it. They'll put it on CNBC. They'll interview the CEO, even though they're coming to you, you know, 24 months after the stock just rallied, you know, a thousand percent. But then they'll finally bring the CEO on and talk about the stock and try to update you guys on it. But again, overall, we really should just be following the numbers and anyone who has already been involved in Elf Beauty, shout out to you guys because you made a phenomenal call, especially for the long term. And we can see here on the daily as well, that's basically where the stock stopped today here at this, well, no, at, at 172.33. But we can see that's essentially right where the stock opened, actually, now that I look at it, 172.59. So this level right here, in my eyes, isn't really going to be the resistance level. And you can see here, even on the daily, we can see the second level of resistance up here above 185. This is why I'm saying if the company does continue to do what it's been doing, low 180s up here, mid 180s, in my eyes, should be no problem. And then, of course, everyone who missed out on it is going to start piling piling in late. And that's why, again, in my opinion, I think 200 could be a layup, no problem. But again, it all depends on these earnings. Again, Elf Beauty, ELF earnings coming out tomorrow after market close. And I'm, I'm going to end it there. So once again, this is Stocks by the Numbers. I want to thank you guys for stopping by. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop it down in the comments section. I'm usually very quick to reply. Thumbs up algorithm helps me get more eyes on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel. That is our handshake agreement. That is how you help me help you. But of course, more importantly, moving forward, like I always say, I understand that markets are rocky. They're volatile. They are very uncertain. So I want to wish all of you success. I hope everyone makes a couple of dollars. Thanks for stopping by. Y'all have a good day.